Hi everyone, welcome to the Movie Exception Show. My name is Fariba, and today I will be doing my movie review on Shazam Fear of Gods. And let's just get right down to it. Um, I didn't like it as much as the first film. Um, I think with the first film, what made it so refreshing and a very good story is that in terms of understanding Billy Batson's journey, we understood the emotional depth of his journey going forward, right? Especially as a kid who's in the foster system. That really played a big part of his story arc from the beginning to the end, him trying to figure out why he was put into the system, as well as eventually accepting who his family is by the end of that film, which does continue to play out in this sequel. Now, in this sequel, we still do see him having more of this family aspect, that, you know, big part of his arc being that it is a family part and just him trying to accept sort of the fact that everyone has their own journeys going forward and that's just him trying to cling on to something sort of showing a bit of that attachment issue that he's now having and how that is going to play into sort of the end of this film and how that is becoming the setup for what this film or the sequel is going to be now in terms of this film i was really surprised how much of the film we see of the characters in their shazam form with the exception of two characters one, I believe Mary, I mean, it was basically the same actress playing the Shazam and not Shazam form. Whereas on the other case, we do see Jack Dylan Grazer having far more of his appearance as the kid version than we see of Adam Broding as a Shazam version. Now, with that being the case, I feel like this film was really missing sort of that emotional depth of the characters, understanding what they're dealing with, what they're, you know, their struggles are what they're trying to get through as well as like understanding their perspectives like there wasn't really that depth in terms of their characters in this film as we saw in the first film and i was surprised how this was a much bigger issue with the main main character being shazam aka billy baxton um a lot of it is because we do see more of that Zachary Levi as more of the Shazam version. So we're mostly seeing kind of the perspective from his side. But anytime I do see the, the moments that we do see Astro Angel playing Billy, I feel like there was definitely a disconnect of like who the characters are, kind of this confusion of who is Billy, knowing that we have the Shazam form as well as his, you know, kid form, which I mean, technically speaking, he's about to become an adult. And yeah, I mean, it just felt like there was definitely kind of two different characters that I'm seeing and there just wasn't that sense mental aspect that I would have expected out of this film. Now, even with this film, they do address a couple of subplots here and there with some of the characters, particularly in one part where there's something going on between Billy and his foster mom. And I mean, again, there's a lot of things where they do kind of indicate a few subplots or, or what could have been subplots or at least mentions of things but they don't really flesh out those stories and i felt like that's where a lot of the character development was very underwhelming especially for billy i was really surprised how much of billy's story was very underwhelming although he still eventually does have a very good ending by the end of this film but a lot of the film just the writing was just really underwhelming in terms of the characters the plots that we're dealing with it just felt like it was a very generic and broad superhero film that isn't really anything too substantial or different um, it plays really safe in terms of what it's trying to do in terms of trying to give this film to us as a sequel now that doesn't take away the fact that this film is still fun. I thought, I actually thought that because it was far more action packed, that at least kind of made up for a lot of the lacking things of what this film didn't have, the structure of the story, the organization, the characters, the characters themselves and understanding who they are and their deep, you know, storylines that we would have liked to see. But even then, like, I felt like the action scenes were pretty action packed. Um, those are really fun to see. And I think that that at least, you know, makes up for a lot of the issues that we do have. And I think by the end of the film, I will say that I didn't totally like despise this film or anything like that. I think that in a way that it was still really fun. It was still something enjoyable to watch on the big screen. I just felt like it, as a superhero film and considering that we are in that era of superhero films where things are being experimented in terms of tone, ambience, the storyline, kind of taking a different approach of so superhero films. This one just didn't really take a more substantial route to kind of expand on Billy and his family storyline. Now, that doesn't take away the fact that this film does still focus on the family aspect i think that was still a kind of the stronger suit of what this film was focused on i think that still at least carried on what the film was focusing on allowing it to at least have something to kind of continue off of from the beginning to the end although it wasn't as fully flushed as he would have wanted to now in terms of the villains 
Um, let's just say they, again, they were just like any sort of typical superhero villain, like su villains that you typically see in superhero films, where, I mean, they're typically like one dimensional in some cases, like Lucy Liu's character. Um, like for her, like I felt like for Lucy Liu's character as one of the daughters of Kronos, like it, it kind of like, they definitely get that, you know, that Lucy Liu is really putting in a lot of work to play this character as kind of the straight up villain in this film, like giving us that, you know, that ruggedness, that toughness of who her character is. And I, I do appreciate that Liu does everything she can to really just give the most out of her character. Um, but even then, like in this film, the villains just aspects are just really just generic, typical superhero villains that you deal with. Um, even in the case with Helen Mary, I think again, she gives off a really good performance in this film as much as she could given the writing, but there wasn't really anything to substantiate with her character. And I feel like, I feel like they kind of waste their opportunity. Now, the one that I felt like was really, really underdeveloped was Regis Zegler's character as Anne. I felt like given how much they focused on her in the trailers, I felt, I thought they were going to really flesh out her character as someone who was kind of the both sides of the aisle type of thing. But honestly, I felt like she was just there as just being there. Like there wasn't, like she does play a big part in like, uh, Freddie's story. But it doesn't really get as fleshed as I would have wanted to be. And I feel like out of all the characters, she was the one who, her character was the one I felt like was really, really underutilized. And it was really disappointing to see that just because I, I thought there was going to be something big out of her character. There was going to be something far more to, some, something more in depth about her character, but they just never really get into that. And I feel like a lot of this film misses out on really kind of diving into the characters and their their struggles or their experiences when that should have been the focus, but instead kind of focus more on the action stuff and like the typical superhero, you know, tropes that we usually get in these superhero films. So honestly speaking, like it was definitely disappointing seeing this film. Like the stories could have like the story arc should have been far more substantial. It could have been far more worked on. The writing was definitely, you know, underdeveloped it wasn't as fully fleshed as we saw in the first film well and even with those being the case i felt like at least the one thing that does end up becoming a good thing about this film it does like for one thing this film is far more sillier is far more like humorous in some cases like whereas the first one i felt like it, it did have its humor moments but it was definitely balanced out by its emotional aspect whereas this one is like definitely far more on the comedic scale um even in the silliness of it like there are some jokes that i felt like I wasn't really kind of into like they were maybe misusing it and even then we're even overusing some of the jokes and some of the sillier jokes that I was like I, I just it just didn't really play out too well um which I know a lot of people might argue with like anything if you have seen the film you would understand which joke I'm talking about um for me it just didn't hit me I felt like it was far more cringy than it was really hilarious just because it is far more problematic but even with that being the case, it is far more silly, it is far more ridiculous than the first film, which I don't think it was too bad. Like, I think that definitely at least gave this film a far more uh, lighthearted tone that I think may have may have been worth putting into in this type of film because again it is far more family oriented it focuses on the family aspects and i feel like that at least plays out well especially in the case of just seeing the shazam form i think that helped out in that side whereas again the emotional part that we usually see in their kid forms wasn't really fully fleshed out and i wish i would have seen more of that especially in one sense between billy and his foster mom part which i feel like it was a really missed opportunity to really flesh out but even with that being the case, right, with the silly tone and all that sort of stuff, it, it's just a typical generic superhero film where you have overblown action. Um, we have a very formulaic story. It's very predictable. is not anything too, you know, surprising about how things work out. I will even say, like, in the, in terms of the, the cameo that we get in this film, I, I, it was clearly a gimmick. It was a gimmick. It was for fan service. It wasn't, again, anything too, you know, substantial, just adding this character. Um, like, I feel like nowadays, like, when it comes to superior films where we do have cameos, we're now discussing of, well, we need to make sure the cameos are actually worth a part of the story. And it doesn't really, and in this case, I don't think it really plays out too well. Like, I mean, it, I mean, it's fun. It's really great seeing the cameo, but like, it, I felt like it could have been, you could have like easily taken that out and it would have still been, you know, the film that it is. But um, yeah, I'm just super disappointed just cause like I was hoping that the story would be far more fleshed out, especially with some of the new characters that we do get. The fact that we have the Daughters of Kronos, I felt like that's something that we could have explored in terms of world building there, but they don't really, again, flesh that out as much as they should have in this film, um, as well as 
setting up the stakes of it all. Although again, we do get this really good action sequences. Like this is a film that just like action after action after action, there really isn't anything in between that sets up like the actual, uh, you know, setting up the characters, understanding what the characters are, where they're dealing with. We get this understanding as like, you know, generic understanding of it, but it just never really gets to kind of pointing to point B of really establishing it, like the big, some of the big plots, as well as even some of the, you know, subplots that we do get in this film. But even with that being the case, again, like, I mean, I, I think the action sequence are fun. That's a fun aspect to anything. Anything. If you are someone who loves just watching action films and don't care about like the storyline and stuff like that, I feel like a lot of people will enjoy that. Um, of course, now that with this film, like, I mean, for me, I was not a big fan of it. I totally prefer the first one over the second one because the first one de did have a very nice storyline, very refreshing one that had like a really balanced tone in terms of the emotional and fun aspects whereas this one is like totally fun but not really setting up the more substantial things as well as not being as sophisticated as the first one but even that being the case again like there's going to be questions about whether or not this would mean that you know is the Zachary Levi still continue off as Shazam or not I feel like the reception is probably going to be a big big part of it like we don't know what's going to happen but I mean there's going to be lots of questions about what's going to happen with you know, Zachary Levi Shazam, what that's going to mean for him and his character moving forward. Like, is there still a future for him? Um, after having seen the post credit scene, they kind of applied, although again, this is coming from before the Peter Saf, the, you know, Peter Safran and James Gunn takeover of the DCU rather than like what we're seeing as their vision now. So it's like, there's definitely a lot of questions about that. But yeah, I mean, I think the first one, again, in terms of post credit scene, having mentioned that, like the first post credit scene, I mean, it was pretty good. It was really fun. I mean, if you've seen Peacemaker, you, you would get the references. And second one, I didn't really care about. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it's just really disappointing. I would have wanted to see so much more in terms of the characters, the storyline that we did get. Um, maybe could have toned down the action scenes more and given a lot more of the depth, the depth of not just the characters, the family care, like the family members, um, as well as the fact that, you know, we could have had something even even understanding some of the more villains aspects because they do kind of address why they're going on this whole plot themselves instead of just doing that we just get overblown action so it's definitely disappointing in that aspect but that's what it is right i mean having taken that there are some pretty good performances like we do get some really fun moments with zachary levi i think with jack dylan grace who does have some of his you know good moments there like he Again, as I mentioned before, he's probably the only character in his kid form that has far more uh, of, you know, an appearance than their Shazam form. But again, I think that, and even with his character, right, I feel like he, there was something a bit more emotional that he does bring into this film that at least kind of equates to what we saw in the first film. But that was kind of it. It was just a really small bit of it. And it just, again, for this film that I expected far more from, it just didn't really reach its capabilities, its potential to be a, a good sequel. So yeah, that's all I have to say about Shazam, Fear of Gods. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of it. If I had to really give it any sort of, 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 a, of a star rating, I'll probably give it like a 2.75. I think the one thing that does kind of make this film far more enjoyable is that it is very, you know, action packed. It has a lot of fun moments. There are some really humorous parts that work in some cases. And I, I like this family aspect where they do focus more on the Shazam family. Um, I think that was something that I did enjoy. Um, in this film, I just wish we could have seen more of the, you know, kid versions as well that could have added some of the more understanding of what they're dealing with at the moment um really surprised again that we don't get to see more of the billy version like the kid version of billy in this film because i feel like again there was definitely kind of this this disconnect of like the diff of the character the characterizations that we're getting out of billy between asher versus levi but there's nothing really much you can do but yeah not too big of a fan of this film that's all i would just say about it again 2.75 is the best i can give it but that's all to say about this film so let me know what your thoughts are. Have you seen Shazam Fear of God? If you have, what do you think about it? Do you like it better than the first film or not? What are some things that you did like and didn't like? And do you think that we're going to see Levi continuing on to play Shazam? And even in that case, like extending it to Asher Angel, or is that it? Is this the last time we're going to see Levi as Shazam? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe.